esteemed audience loves a good how I got my agent story. How'd you land Dan Lazar of Writer's House? Um, Am I saying that right? Is it Writer's House? I can't remember the name of every agency. Yeah, Writer's House. Oh, it is Writer's House. Okay, good. Yeah. You know, um, I was introduced to Dan by um, some fellow cartoonists who have also gone on to uh, write some some books. Um, If you know Stefan Pastis, Mark Tatuli, um, Michael Fry, they've all worked with him. And uh, they... uh, we go to this thing called Rubens every year. It's the Cartoonist Awards, National Cartoonist Awards each year. And, uh, and it's an excuse to hang out and um, have some drinks with your friends, frankly. And and, uh, and over talking with them and, and uh, Lincoln Purse uh, had, had, well, first you'd had Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Jeff Kenny, and then Lincoln tried it with Big Nate. And then uh, we all sort of got interested and, Stefan tried it. And anyway, so I, I got introduced. Uh, there was sort of this push of cartoonists who've been doing comic strips for years, and we know how to write funny. We know how to draw. We know how to make something funny. And uh, it felt like we had all the tools, and it was an exciting thing to try to, to come up with a, a hybrid novel. Um, and, you know, it's, a, it's unfortunate that I think almost anybody who writes a book in that genre right now you know, the first line of the review is, well, we've got another, you know, Diary of a Wimpy Kid uh, here. But in my mind, it's become more of a a true genre. It's, it's, it's uh, and they're so popular and kids love them. So it's fun to write them because, you know, kids are going to respond to them. And um, yeah, so here we have I, a, another type of book that kids really enjoy reading and that is super successful. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, what, what could be wrong with that? So, uh, so, and your objection is, <laughs> and and I just over and over and over, I I get you know uh, the feedback that kids love them and and the parents love them that the kids love them and and um, so yeah, that was so much fun to write. Uh, but anyway, so so I contacted Dan and uh, I had three or four ideas that I've been brewing up uh, before I talked with him. And, uh, and then we talked through them and I started working on a couple of them and eventually we whittled it down. And, uh, and then eventually I sent him a draft with illustrations and all that. And, and it was, um, it wasn't the whole book, but uh, it was enough that, you know, he wanted to work with me. And, and um, Nerd question for anybody that might want to do something similar. The illustrations, you're not doing those on the page the way they're eventually going to appear. You're sending those separate them from the text right well, actually what i would do is i would just do them in photoshop and drop them into the word document um oh cool yeah so i, I would just kind of separate you know and then even i, I hadn't done all the illustrations because there are a lot of the illustrations in those Zarf books um i hadn't done all of them but what i had done is indicated you know sort of in parentheses here's where you know this gag i would describe what the joke was going to be or what the illustration would be um but I, I put in quite quite a few illustrations to get the feel for the book and, uh, and feel for the characters, and it you know he responded to it and then um, it was pretty amazing that then uh, publishers responded to it. Uh, you know I, I still feel lucky every day that I get to do this, so um, I was thrilled. Now I had also done my graphic novel before that with Top Shelf Productions, and that um, I didn't have an agent. When I when I did that book, um, are we talking about the Monster on the Hill, or which one are we talking? Yeah, Monster on the Hill, uh, the one that's being made into the movie. Um, and so I had just done I had done a seven page story for an anthology um, that somebody was putting together, and uh, and then the anthology fell through, and I was showing it to somebody. I was actually at like a cartoonist meetup kind of thing in Austin. I was living in Austin, Texas at the time, and. Uh, and I showed it to a guy, and he knew somebody. And you know, next thing I know, I was talking to the producer or the publisher of um, Top Shelf, and um, and he liked it. And so that sort of took off that way as well. Uh, so I feel really lucky that that these things have um, been well received. You know, so, um, and again, I've always felt pretty confident in being able to write something that was. Um, at least amusing, if not funny. Um, and so, 
it, it was so much fun to spread my wings, you know, after doing a comic strip where every, every day it's four panels and it's done. Um, you know, you can have a story that kind of lasts throughout a week, but um, it was really nice to stretch out and write dialogue and, and all that. So um, I feel like I'm rambling at this point, but anyway, it was, it was yeah, nice. It's all, to, it's all good rambling. You're telling the story. I want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it was, uh, it, it was, fun to write the dialogue and uh and just expand and I, I think what slowly has happened over the years is that i started out as an illustrator and uh so then i started doing the comic strip you know so slowly i became an artist who thought he could kind of write and i think i've now kind of switched over to where i feel like i may enjoy the writing as much as the, the illustration but it's it's you know you could ask me tomorrow and I might feel differently, but um, that's been an interesting way to slide. It's almost like I came in the back door of all of this because I started out as a cartoonist. Um, and that was sort of my entry into publishing. But, uh, and, and that gave me sort of, uh, sort of a leg to stand on also when I was writing to agents and things like that. 